Chapter 10. The Opulence of the Absolute. Text 1. Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Bhuya Eva Mahabaho Shri Nu Me Paramam Vacha Yate Ham Priyamanaya Bhakshami Hita Kamyaya Shri Bhagavan Uvacha the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Buya, again, Eva, certainly, Mahabaho, O mighty armed, Srinu, just here, Me, my, Paramam, supreme, Vacha, information, Yat, that which, Te, to you, Aham, I, Priyamanaya, thinking you dear to me, Vakshami, say, Hita Kamyaya, for your benefit. Translation The Supreme Lord said, My dear friend, mighty armed Arjuna, listen again to my supreme word, which I shall impart to you for your benefit, and which will give you great joy. Purport the word paramam is explained thus by Parasharamuni. One who is full in six opulences, who has full strength, full fame, wealth, knowledge, beauty, and renunciation, is paramam, or the Supreme Personality of Godhead. While Krishna was present on this earth, he displayed all six opulences. Therefore, great sages like Parasharamuni have all accepted Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Now Krishna is instructing Arjuna in more confidential knowledge of his opulences and his work. Previously, beginning with the seventh chapter, the Lord already explained his different energies and how they are acting. Now in this chapter, he explains his specific opulences to Arjuna. In the previous chapter, he has clearly explained his different energies, to establish devotion and firm conviction. Again, in this chapter, he tells Arjuna about his manifestations and various opulences. The more one hears about the Supreme God, the more one becomes fixed in devotional service. One should always hear about the Lord and the association of devotees. That will enhance one's devotional service. Discourses in the society of devotees can take place only among those who are really anxious to be in Krishna consciousness. Others cannot take part in such discourses. The Lord clearly tells Arjuna that because he is very dear to him, for his benefit such discourses are taking place. Text 2 Name vidu saragana prabhavam na maharshaya aham adir hi devanam Maharshinam cha sarvasha. Na, never. May, my. Vidu, knows. Sura gana, demigods. Prabhavam, opulences. Na, never. Maharshaya, great sages. Aham, I am. Adi, the origin. He, certainly. Devanam of the demigods, Maharshinam, of the great sages, Cha, also, Sarvasha, in all respects. Translation Neither the hosts of demigods nor the great sages know my origin, for in every respect I am the source of the demigods and the sages. Purport As stated in the Brahma Samhita, Lord Krishna is the Supreme Lord. No one is greater than Him. He is the cause of all causes. Here it is also stated by the Lord personally that He is the cause of all demigods and sages. Even the demigods and great sages cannot understand Krishna. They can understand neither His name nor His personality. So what is the position of the so-called scholars of this tiny planet? No one can understand why this Supreme God comes to earth as an ordinary human being 
and executes such commonplace and yet wonderful activities. One should know, then, that scholarship is not the qualification necessary to understand Krishna. Even the demigods and the great sages have tried to understand Krishna by their mental speculation, and they have failed to do so. In the Srimad Bhagavatam also, it is clearly said that even the great demigods are not able to understand the Supreme Personality of Godhead. They can speculate to the limits of their imperfect senses and can reach the opposite conclusion of impersonalism, of something not manifested by the three qualities of material nature. Or they can imagine something by mental speculation, but it is not possible to understand Krishna by such foolish speculation. Here the Lord indirectly says that if anyone wants to know the absolute truth, here I am present as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I am the Supreme. One should know this. Although one cannot understand the inconceivable Lord who is personally present, He nonetheless exists. We can actually understand Krishna who is eternal, full of bliss and knowledge, simply by studying His words in Bhagavad Gita and Srimad Bhagavatam. The impersonal Brahman can be conceived by persons who are already in the inferior energy of the Lord. But the personality of Godhead cannot be conceived unless one is in the transcendental position. Because most men cannot understand Krishna in his actual situation, out of his causeless mercy he descends to show favor to such speculators. Yet, despite the Supreme Lord's uncommon activities, these speculators, due to contamination in the material energy, still think that the impersonal Brahman is the Supreme. Only the devotees who are fully surrendered unto the Supreme Lord can understand, by the grace of the Supreme Personality, that He is Krishna. The devotees of the Lord do not bother about the impersonal Brahman conception of God. Their faith and devotion bring them to surrender immediately unto the Supreme Lord, and out of the causeless mercy of Krishna, they can understand Krishna. No one else can understand him. So even the great sages agree, what is Atma, what is the Supreme? It is he whom we have to worship. Text 3 Yo mam hajam anadim cha veti loka maheshvaram asamuta samart yeshu sarva papai pramuchate ya anyone mam unto me ajam unborn anadim without beginning cha also veti knows loka the planets maheshvaram Supreme Master, Asamuda, without doubt, Sa, he, Martyeshu, among those subject to death, Sarva Papai, from all sinful reactions, Pramuchate is delivered. Translation He who knows me as the unborn, as the beginningless, as the Supreme Lord of all the worlds, he, undiluted among men, is freed from all sins. PURPORT As stated in the seventh chapter, those who are trying to elevate themselves to the platform of spiritual realization are not ordinary men. They are superior to millions and millions of ordinary men who have no knowledge of spiritual realization. But out of those actually trying to understand their spiritual situation, one who can come to the understanding that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the proprietor of everything, the unborn, is the most successful, spiritually realized person. In that stage only, when one has fully understood Krishna's supreme position, can one be free completely from all sinful reactions. Here the word ajam, meaning unborn, should not be confused with the living entities, who are described in the second chapter as Ajam. The Lord is different from the living entities, who are taking birth and dying due to material attachment. 
the conditional souls are changing their bodies, but his body is not changeable. Even when he comes to this material world, he comes as the same unborn. Therefore, in the fourth chapter it is said that the Lord, by his internal potency, is not under the inferior material energy, but is always in the superior energy. He was existing before the creation, and he is different from his creation. All the demigods were created within this material world, but as far as Krishna is concerned, it is said that he is not created. Therefore, Krishna is different even from the great demigods like Brahma and Shiva. And because he is the creator of Brahma, Shiva, and all other demigods, he is the supreme person of all planets. Sri Krishna is therefore different from everything that is created, and anyone who knows him as such immediately becomes liberated from all sinful reaction. One must be liberated from all sinful activities to be in the knowledge of the Supreme Lord. Only by devotional service can he be known, and not by any other means, as stated in Bhagavad Gita. One should not try to understand Krishna as a human being, as stated previously. Only a foolish person thinks him to be a human being. This is again expressed here in a different way. A man who is not foolish, who is intelligent enough to understand the constitutional position of the Godhead, is always free from all sinful reactions. If Krishna is known as the son of Devaki, then how can he be unborn? That is also explained in Srimad Bhagavatam. When he appeared before Devaki and Vasudev, he was not born as an ordinary child. He appeared in his original form, and then he transformed himself into an ordinary child. Anything done on the, under the direction of Krishna is transcendental. It cannot be contaminated by the material reactions, which may be auspicious or inauspicious. The conception that there are things auspicious and inauspicious in the material world is more or less a mental concoction, because there is nothing auspicious in the material world. Everything is inauspicious, because the very material mask is inauspicious. We simply imagine it to be auspicious. Real auspiciousness depends on activities in Krishna consciousness in full devotion and service. Therefore, if we at all want our activities to be auspicious, then we should work under the directions of the Supreme Lord. Such directions are given in authoritative scriptures such as Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita or from a bona fide spiritual master. Because the spiritual master is the representative of the Supreme Lord, his direction is directly the direction of the Supreme Lord. The spiritual master, saintly persons, and scriptures direct in the same way. There is no contradiction in these three sources. All actions done under such direction are free from the reactions of pious or impious activities of this material world. The transcendental attitude of the devotee in the performance of activities is actually that of renunciation, and this is called sannyas. Anyone acting under the direction of the Supreme Lord is actually a sannyasi and a yogi, and not the man who has simply taken the dress of the sannyasi or a pseudo-yogi. Text four through five. Budhir gyanam asamoha, shama satyam dama shama, sukam dukam bavo bavo, bayam cha bayam eva cha, ahimsa samata tushtis, tapo danam yasho yasha, bavanti bava bhutanam, Mata eva pritag vida. Buddhi, intelligence. Ganam, knowledge. Asam moha, freedom from doubt. Shama, forgiveness. Satyam, truthfulness. Dhamma, control of the senses. Shama, control of the mind. Sukham, happiness. Dukham, distress. Bhava, 
birth, abava, death, bayam, fear, cha, also, abayam, without fear, eva, also, cha, and, ahimsa, nonviolence, samata, equilibrium, tushti, satisfaction, tapa, penance, dhanam, charity, yasha, fame, ayasha, infamy, bhavanti, become, bhava, natures, bhutanam, of living entities, mata, from me, eva, certainly, pritakvita, differently arranged. Translation Intelligence, knowledge, freedom from doubt and, and delusion, forgiveness, truthfulness, self-control and calmness, pleasure and pain, birth, death, fear, fearlessness, nonviolence, equanimity, satisfaction, austerity, charity, fame and infamy are created by me alone. PURPORT the different qualities of living entities, be they good or bad, are all created by Krishna, and they are described here. Intelligence refers to the power of analyzing things in proper perspective, and knowledge refers to understanding what is spirit and what is matter. Ordinary knowledge obtained by university education pertains only to matter and it is not accepted here as knowledge. Knowledge means knowing the distinction between spirit and matter. In modern education there is no knowledge about the spirit. They are simply taking care of the material elements and bodily needs. Therefore academic knowledge is not complete. Asamoha, freedom from doubt and delusion, can be achieved when one is not hesitant and when he understands the transcendental philosophy. Slowly but surely he becomes free from bewilderment. Nothing should be accepted blindly. Everything should be accepted with care and with caution. Shama, forgiveness, should be practiced, and one should excuse the minor offenses of others. Satcham, truthfulness, means that facts should be presented as they are for the benefit of others. Facts should not be misrepresented. <clears throat> According to social conventions, it is said that one can speak the truth only when it is palatable to others. But that is not truthfulness. The truth should be spoken in a straight and forward way, so that others will understand actually what the facts are. If a man is a thief, and if people are warned that he is a thief, that is truth. Although sometimes the truth is unpalatable, one should not refrain from speaking it. Truthfulness demands that the facts be presented as they are for the benefit of others. That is the definition of truth. Self-control means that the senses should not be used for unnecessary personal enjoyment. There is no prohibition against meeting the proper needs of the senses, but unnecessary sense enjoyment is detrimental for spiritual advancement. Therefore, the senses should be restrained from unnecessary use. Similarly, the mind should not indulge in unnecessary thoughts. That is called shama, or calmness. Nor should one spend one's time pondering over earning money. That is a misuse of the thinking power. The mind should be used to understand the prime necessity of human beings, and that should be presented authoritatively. The power of thought should be developed in association with persons who are authorities in the scriptures, saintly persons and spiritual masters, and those whose thinking is highly developed. Sukham, pleasure or happiness, should always be in that which is favorable for the cultivation of the spiritual knowledge of Krishna consciousness. And similarly, that which is painful or which causes distress is that which is unfavorable for the cultivation of Krishna consciousness. Anything favorable 
for the development of Krishna consciousness should be accepted, and anything unfavorable should be rejected. Bhava, birth, should be understood to refer to the body. As far as the soul is concerned, there is neither birth nor death, that we, that we have discussed in the beginning of Bhagavad Gita. Birth and death apply to one's embodiment in the material world. Fear is due to worrying about the future. A person in Krishna consciousness has no fear, because by his activities he is sure to go back to the spiritual sky, back home, back to Godhead. Therefore his future is very bright. Others, however, do not know what their future holds. They have no knowledge of what the next life holds. So they are, therefore, in constant anxiety. If we, if we want to get free from anxiety, then the best course is to understand Krishna and be situated always in Krishna consciousness. In that way, we will be free from all fear. In the Srimad Bhagavatam, it is stated that fear is caused by our absorption in the illusory energy. But those who are free from the illusory energy, those who are confident that they are not the material body, that they are spiritual parts of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and are therefore engaged in the transcendental service of the Supreme Godhead, have nothing to fear. Their future is very bright. This fear is a condition of persons who are not in Krishna consciousness. Bayam, fearlessness, is only possible for one in Krishna consciousness. Ahimsa, nonviolence, means that one should not do anything which will put others into misery or confusion. Material activities that are promised by so many politicians, sociologists, philanthropists, etc., do not produce very good results, because the politicians and philanthropists have no transcendental vision. They do not know what is actually beneficial for human society. Ahimsa means that people should be trained in such a way that the full utilization of the human body can be achieved. The human body is meant for spiritual realization, so any movement or any commissions which do not further that end, commit violence on the human body. That which furthers the future spiritual happiness of the people in general is called nonviolence. Samatha, equanimity, refers to freedom from attachment and aversion. To be very much attached or to be very much detached is not the best. This material world should be accepted without attachment or aversion. Similarly, that which is favorable for prosecuting Krishna consciousness should be accepted. That which is unfavorable should be rejected. That is called samatha, equanimity. A person in Krishna consciousness has nothing to reject and nothing to accept unless it is useful in the prosecution of Krishna consciousness. Tushti Satisfaction means that one should not be eager to gather more and more material goods by unnecessary activity. One should be satisfied with whatever is obtained by the grace of the Supreme Lord. That is called satisfaction. Tapas means austerity or penance. There are many rules and definitions in the Vedas which apply here, like rising early in the morning and taking a bath. Sometimes it is very troublesome to rise early in the morning. But whatever voluntary trouble one may suffer in this way is called penance. Similarly, there are prescriptions for fasting on certain days of the month. One may not be inclined to practice such fasting, but because of his determination to make advancement in the science of Krishna consciousness, he should accept such bodily troubles which are recommended. However, one should not fast unnecessarily or against Vedic injunctions. One should not fast for some political purpose. That is described in the Bhagavad Gita as fasting in ignorance. And anything done in ignorance or passion does not lead to spiritual advancement. 
everything done in the mode of goodness does advance one, however, in fasting done in terms of the Vedic injunctions, enriches one in spiritual knowledge. As far as charity is concerned, one should give 50% of his earnings to some good cause. And what is a good cause? It is that which is conducted in terms of Krishna consciousness. That is not only a good cause, but it is the best cause. Because Krishna is good, his cause is also good. Thus charity should be given to a person who is engaged in Krishna consciousness. According to Vedic literature, it is enjoined that charity should be given to the Brahmins. This practice is still followed, although not very nicely, in terms of the Vedic injunction. But still, the injunction is that charity should be given to the Brahmins. Why? Because they are engaged in higher cultivation of spiritual knowledge. A Brahmin is supposed to devote his whole life to understanding Brahman. A Brahma Jhana is one who knows Brahman. He is called a Brahmin. Thus charity is offered to the Brahmins because since they are always engaged in higher spiritual service, they have no time to earn their livelihood. In the Vedic literature, charity is also to be awarded to the renouncer of life, the sannyasi. The sannyasis beg from door to door, not for money, but for missionary purposes. The system is that they go from door to door to awaken the householders from the slumber of ignorance. Because the householders are engaged in family affairs and have forgotten their actual purpose in life, awakening, awakening their Krishna consciousness, it is the business of the sannyasis to go as beggars to the householders and encourage them to be Krishna conscious. As it is said in the Vedas, one should awake and achieve what is due him in this human form of life. This knowledge and method is distributed by the sannyasis. Hence, charity is to be given to the renouncer of life, to the Brahmins, and similar good causes, not to any whimsical cause. Yasha, fame, should be according to Lord Chaitanya, who said that a man is famous when he is known as a great devotee. That is real fame. If one has become a great man in Krishna consciousness, and it is known, then he is truly famous. One who does, who does not have such fame is infamous. All these qualities are manifest throughout the universe in human society, and in the society of the demigods. There are many forms of humanity on other planets, and these qualities are there. Now for one who wants to advance in Krishna consciousness, Krishna creates all these qualities, but the person develops them himself from within. One who engages in the devotional service of the Supreme Lord develops all the good qualities as arranged by the Supreme Lord. Of, of whatever we find, good or bad, the origin is Krishna. Nothing can manifest in this material world which is not in Krishna. That is knowledge. Although we know that things are differently situated, we should realize that everything flows from Krishna. Text 6 Maharshaya Sapta Purve Chatparo Manavastata Mad Bhava Manasa Jata Yesham Loka Ima Praja Maharshaya the great sages, Sapta, seven, Purve, before, Chatvara, four, Manava, Manus, Tata, also, Matbhava, born of me, Manasa, from the mind, Jata, born, Yesham, of them, Loke, the planets, Ima, all this, Praja, population. Translation The seven great sages, and before them, the four other great sages, and the Manus, progenitors of mankind, are born out of my mind, and all creatures in these planets descend from them. 
purport. The Lord is giving a genealogical synopsis of the universal population. Brahma is the original creature born out of the energy of the Supreme Lord known as Hiranyagarbha. And from Brahma, all the seven great sages, and before them four other great sages, named Sanaka, Sananda, Sanatan, and Sanatkumara, and the Manus, are manifest. <clears throat> all these twenty-five great sages are known as the patriarchs of the living entities all over the universe. There are innumerable universes and innumerable planets within each universe, and each planet is full of population of different varieties. All of them are born of these twenty-five patriarchs. Brahma underwent penance for one thousand years of the demigods, before he realized by the grace of Krishna how to create. Then from Brahma, Sanaka, Sananda, Sanatan, and Sanatkumara came out, then Rudra, and then the seven sages. And in this way all the Brahmins and Kshatriyas are born out of the energy of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Brahma is known as Pitamaha, the grandfather, and Krishna is known as the Prapita Maha, the father of the grandfather. That is stated in the 11th chapter of the Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita, 11th chapter, verse 39. Text 7. Etam vibhutim yogam cha mama yoveti tattvata so vikalpena yogena yujate natra samshaya Etam, all this. Vibhutim, opulence, yogamcha, also mystic power, mama, of mind, ya, anyone, veti, knows, tatvata, factually, sa, he, avi kalpena, without division, yogena, in devotional service, yujate, engaged, na, never, atra, here, samshaya, doubt. Translation. He who knows in truth this glory and power of mind engages in unalloyed devotional service. Of this there is no doubt. PURPORT The highest summit of spiritual perfection is knowledge of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Unless one is firmly convinced of the different opulences of the Supreme Lord, he cannot engage in devotional service. Generally, people know that God is great, but they do not know in detail how God is great. Here are the details. If one knows factually how God is great, then naturally he becomes a surrendered soul and engages himself in the devotional service of the Lord. When one factually knows the opulences of the Supreme, there is no alternative but to surrender to him. This factual knowledge can be known from the descriptions in Srimad Bhagavatam and Bhagavad Gita and similar literatures. In the administration of this universe there are many demigods distributed throughout the planetary system. And the chief of them are Brahma, Lord Shiva, and the four great Kumaras and other patriarchs. There are many forefathers of the population of the universe, and all of them are born of the Supreme Lord Krishna. The Supreme Personality of Godhead Krishna is the original forefather of all forefathers. These are some of the opulences of the Supreme Lord. When one is firmly convinced of them, he accepts Krishna with great faith and without any doubt, and he engages in devotional service. All this particular knowledge is required in order to increase one's interest in the loving devotional service of the Lord. One should not neglect to understand fully how great Krishna is, for by knowing the greatness of Krishna, one will be able to be fixed in sincere devotional service. Text 8 
Aham sarvasya prabhavo, mata sarvam pravartate, iti matva pajantimam, buddha bhava samanvita. Aham, I, sarvasya, all, prabhava, source of generation, mata, from me, sarvam, everything, pravartate, emanates, iti, thus, Matva, knowing, Bhajante, becomes devoted, Mam, unto me, Bhuta, learned, Bhava Samanvita, with great attention. Translation I am the source of all spiritual and material worlds. Everything emanates from me. The wise who know this perfectly engage in my devotional service and worship me with all their hearts. Purport. A learned scholar who has studied the Vedas perfectly and has information from authorities like Lord Chaitanya and who knows how to apply these teachings can understand that Krishna is the origin of everything in both the material and spiritual worlds. And because he knows this perfectly, he becomes firmly fixed in the devotional service of the Supreme Lord. He can never be deviated by any amount of nonsensical commentaries or by fools. All Vedic literature agrees that Krishna is the source of Brahma, Shiva, and all other demigods. In the Atarva Veda it is said, Yo Brahmanam Vidadati Purvam Yo Vai Vedam Cha Kapayati Sma Krishna. It was Krishna who in the beginning instructed Brahma in Vedic knowledge, and who disseminated Vedic knowledge in the past. Then again it is said, Ata Purusho Havai Narayano, Kamayata Praja Shudreya Iti Upakramaya. Then the Supreme Personality Narayan desired to create living entities. Again it is said, Narayanad Brahma Jayate, Narayanad Prajapati, Prajayate Narayanad, Indro Jayate, Narayanad Asto Vasavo Jayante, Narayanad Ekadasha, Rudra Jayante, Narayanad Dvada Shaditya. From Narayan, Brahma is born, and from Narayan, the patriarchs are also born. From the Ryan, Indra is born, and from the Ryan, the eight Vasus are born. From the Ryan, the eleven Rudras are born. From the Ryan, the twelve Adityas are born. It is said in the same Vedas, Brahmanyo Devaki Putra, the son of Devaki, Krishna, is the supreme personality. Then it is said, Eko vai Narayana asin na Brahma na ishano na po nagni samo neme. Dyav a prithivi na nakshatrani na surya sa ekaki na ramate tasya. Dhyananta stasya yatra chandogai kriya manashtak ka di sam gyakya stuti stoma stomam uchate in the beginning of the creation there was only the supreme personality narayan there was no brahma no shiva no fire no moon no stars in the sky no sun there was only krishna who creates all and enjoys all in the many puranas it is said that Lord Shiva was born from the highest, the Supreme Lord Krishna. And the Vedas say that it is the Supreme Lord, the creator of Brahma and Shiva, who is to be worshipped. In the Moksha Dharma, Krishna also says, Prajapatim cha rudram cha piyaham eva srijami vai tau himam na vijanito mama maya vimohito. The patriarchs, Shiva and others, 
are created by me, though they do not know that they are created by me because they are deluded by my illusory energy. In Varaha Purana it is also said, Narayana Paro Devas Tasmaj Jatash Chatur Mukha Tasmad Rudro Bhava Deva Sacha Sarva Gyatam Kata. Narayan is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and from him Brahma was born, and from whom Shiva was born. Lord Krishna is the source of all generations, and he is called the most efficient cause of everything. He says that because everything is born of me, I am the original source of all. Everything is under me, no one is above me. There is no supreme controller other than Krishna. One who understands Krishna in such a way from a bona fide spiritual master and from Vedic literature, who engages all his energy in Krishna consciousness, becomes a truly learned man. In comparison to him, all others who do not know Krishna properly are but fools. Only a fool would consider Krishna to be an ordinary man. A Krishna conscious person should not be bewildered by fools. He should avoid all unauthorized commentaries and interpretations on Bhagavad Gita and proceed in Krishna consciousness with determination and firmness. Text 9 Machita madgata prana bodayanta parasparam kata yantash chamam nicham tushanti cha ramanti cha Machita minds fully engaged in me matgata prana lives devoted to the service of Krishna bodayanta preaching Parasparam, among themselves. Katayanta cha, talking also. Mam, about me. Nityam, perpetually. Tushanti, are pleased. Cha, also. Ramanti, enjoy transcendental bliss. Cha, also. Translation the thoughts of my pure devotees dwell in me. Their lives are surrendered to me, and they, and they derive great satisfaction and bliss, enlightening one another and conversing about me. PURPORT Pure devotees whose characteristics are mentioned here engage themselves fully in the transcendental loving service of the Lord. Their minds cannot be diverted from the lotus feet of Krishna. Their talks are solely on the transcendental subjects. The symptoms of the pure devotees are described in this verse specifically. Devotees of the Supreme Lord are twenty-four hours daily engaged in glorifying the pastimes of the Supreme Lord. Their hearts and souls are constantly submerged in Krishna, and they take pleasure in discussing Him with other devotees. In the preliminary stage of devotional service, they relish the transcendental pleasure from the service itself, and in the mature stage they are actually situated in love of God. Once situated in that transcendental position, they can relish the highest perfection which is exhibited by the Lord in His abode. Lord Chaitanya likens transcendental devotional service to the sowing of a seed in the heart of the living entity. There are innumerable living entities traveling throughout the different planets of the universe, and out of them there are a few who are fortunate enough to meet a pure devotee and get the chance to understand devotional service. This devotional service is just like a seed, and if it is sown in the heart of a living entity, and if he goes on hearing and chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, that seed fructifies, just as the seed of a tree fructifies with 
regular watering. The spiritual plant of devotional service gradually grows and grows until it penetrates the covering of the material universe and enters into the Brahma Jyoti effulgence in the spiritual sky. In the spiritual sky also that plant grows more and more until it reaches the highest planet, which is called Goloka Vrindavan, the supreme planet of Krishna. Ultimately the plant takes shelter under the lotus feet of Krishna and rests there. Gradually as a plant grows fruits and flowers, that plant of devotional service also produces fruits, and the watering process in the form of chanting and hearing goes on. This plant of devotional service is fully described in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. It is explained there that when the complete plant takes shelter under the lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, one becomes fully absorbed in love of God. Then he cannot live even for a moment without being in contact with the Supreme Lord, just as a, just as a fish cannot live without water. In such a state, the devotee actually attains the transcendental qualities in contact with the Supreme Lord. The, the Srimad Bhagavatam is also full of such narration about the relationship between the Supreme Lord and his devotees. Therefore, the Srimad Bhagavatam is very dear to the devotees. In this narration, there is nothing about material activities, sense gratification, or liberation. Srimad Bhagavatam is the only narration in which the transcendental nature of the Supreme Lord and his devotees is fully described. Thus, the realized souls in Krishna consciousness take continual pleasure in hearing such transcendental literatures, just as a young boy and girl take pleasure in association. Text 10 Tesham satata yuktanam, bhajantam priti purvakam, dadami buddhi yogam tam, yena mam upayanti te. Tesham, unto them, satata yuktanam, always engaged, bhajatam, in devotional service, priti purvakam, in loving ecstasy, dadami, I give, buddhi yogam, real intelligence, tam, that, yena, by which, mam, unto me, upayanti, come, te, they. Translation. To those who, who are constantly devoted and worship me with love, I give the understanding by which they can come to me. Purport. In this verse, the word buddhi yogam is very significant. We, re we may remember that in the second chapter, the Lord instructing Arjuna said that he had spoken to him of many things, and that he would instruct him in the way of Bodhi Yoga. Now Bodhi Yoga is explained. Bodhi Yogam itself is action in Krishna consciousness. That is the highest intelligence. Bodhi means intelligence and Yoga means mystic activities or mystic elevation. When one tries to go back home, back to Godhead, and takes fully to Krishna consciousness in devotional service, his action is called Buddhi Yogam. In other words, Buddhi Yogam is the process by which one gets out of the entanglement of this material world. The ultimate goal of progress is Krishna. People do not know this. Therefore, the association of devotees and a bona fide spiritual master are important. One should know that the goal is Krishna, and when the goal is assigned, then the path is slowly but progressively traversed, and the ultimate goal is achieved. When a person knows the goal of life, but is addicted to the fruits of activities, he is acting in karma yoga. When he knows that the goal is Krishna, but he takes pleasure in mental speculations to understand Krishna, he is acting in jnana yoga. And when he knows the goal and seeks Krishna completely in Krishna consciousness and devotional service, he is acting in bhakti yoga 
or Buddha Yoga, which is the complete yoga. This complete yoga is the highest perfectional stage of life. A person may have a bona fide spiritual master and may be attached to a spiritual organization, but still, if he is not intelligent enough to make progress, then Krishna from within gives him instructions so that he may ultimately come to him without difficulty. The qualification is that a person always engage himself in Krishna consciousness and with love and devotion render all kinds of services. He should perform some sort of work for Krishna and that work should be with love. If a devotee is intelligent enough, he will make progress on the path of self-realization. If one is sincere and devoted to the activities of devotional service, the Lord gives him a chance to make progress and ultimately attain to him. Text 11 Tesham evanu kampartam aham agyanat jam tama na shayami atma bhavashto jnana dipena basvata Tesham, for them, eva, certainly, anukampa artam, to show special mercy, aham, I, agyana jam, due to ignorance, tama, darkness, nashayami, dispel, atma, within, bhavashta, themselves, jnana, of knowledge, dipena, with the lamp, basvata, glowing. Translation Out of compassion for them, I, dwelling in their hearts, destroy with the shining lamp of knowledge the darkness born of ignorance. <clears throat> Purport. When Lord Chaitanya was in Banaras, promulgating the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, thousands of people were following him. Prakashananda, a very influential and learned scholar in Banaras at that time, derided Lord Chaitanya for being a sentimentalist. Sometimes, philosophers criticize the devotees because they think that most of the devotees are in the darkness of ignorance and are philosophically naive sentimentalists. Actually, that is not the fact. They are very, very learned scholars who have put forward the philosophy of devotion. But even if a devotee does not take advantage of their literatures or of his spiritual master, if he is sincere in his devotional service, he is helped by Krishna himself within his heart. So the sincere devotee engaged in Krishna consciousness cannot be without knowledge. The only qualification is that one carry out devotional service in full Krishna consciousness. The modern philosophers think that without discriminating one cannot have pure knowledge. For them, this answer is given by the Supreme Lord. Those who are engaged in devotional service, even though they be without sufficient education and even without sufficient knowledge of the Vedic principles, are still helped by the Supreme God, as stated in this verse. The Lord tells Arjuna that basically there is no possibility of understanding the Supreme Truth, the Absolute Truth, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, simply by speculating. For the Supreme Truth is so great that it is not possible to understand him or to achieve him simply by making a mental effort. A man can go on speculating for several millions of years, and if he is not devoted, if he is not a lover of the Supreme Truth, he will never understand Krishna or the Supreme Truth. Only by devotional service is the Supreme Truth, Krishna, pleased and by his inconceivable energy, he can reveal himself to the heart of the pure devotee. The pure devotee always has Krishna within his heart. Therefore, he is just like the sun that dissipates the darkness of ignorance. This is the special mercy rendered to the pure devotee by Krishna. 
Due to the contamination of material association through many, many millions of births, one's heart is always covered with the dust of materialism. But when one engages in devotional service and constantly chants Hare Krishna, the dust quickly clears and one is elevated to the platform of pure knowledge. The ultimate goal of Vishnu can be attained only by this chant and by devotional service, and not by mental speculation or argument. The pure devotee does not have to worry about the necessities of life. He need not be anxious because when he removes the darkness from his heart, everything is provided automatically by the Supreme Lord, for he is pleased by the devotional service of the devotee. This is the essence of the Gita's teachings. By studying Bhagavad Gita, one can become a completely surrendered soul to the Supreme Lord and engage himself in pure devotional service. As the Lord takes charge, one becomes completely free from all kinds of materialistic endeavors. Text 12 through 13. <clears throat> Arjuna Uvacha Param Brahma Param Dhamma Pavitram Paramam Bhavan Purusham Shashvatam Divyam Adi Devam Ajam Vibhum Ahustvam Rishaya Sarve Der Devarshir Naradas Tata Asito Devalo Vyasa Svayam Chaiva Bravishime Arjuna Uvacha, Arjuna said, Param, Supreme, Brahma, Truth, Param, Supreme, Dhamma, Sustenance, Pavitram, Purists, Paramam, Supreme, Bhavan, Yourself, Purusham, Personality, Shashvatam, Original, Divyam, Transcendental, Adi Devam, Original Lord, Ajam, unborn. Vibhum, greatest. Ahu, say. Tvam, unto you. Rishaya, sages. Sarve, all. Devarshi, the sage among the demigods. Narada, Narada. Tata, also. Asita, Asita. Devala, Devala. Vyasa, Vyas. Svayam, personally, Cha, also, Eva, certainly, Bravishi, explaining, May, unto me. Translation Arjuna said, You are the supreme Brahman, the ultimate, the supreme abode and purifier, the absolute truth and the eternal divine person. You are the primal God, transcendental and original and you are the unborn and all-pervading beauty. All the great sages, such as Narada, Asita, Devala, and Vyas, proclaim this of you, and now you yourself are declaring it to me. PURPORT In these two verses, the Supreme Lord gives a chance to the modern philosopher. For here it is clear that the Supreme is different from the individual soul. Arjuna, after hearing the essential four verses of Bhagavad Gita in this chapter, became completely free from all doubts and accepted Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He at once boldly declares, You are Param Brahma, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And previously, Krishna states that he is the originator of everything and everyone. Every demigod and every human being is dependent on him. Men and demigods, out of ignorance, think that they are absolute and independent of the Supreme Lord Krishna. That ignorance is removed perfectly by the discharge of devotional service. This is already explained in the previous verse by the Lord. Now, by his grace, Arjuna is accepting him as the Supreme Truth, in concordance with the Vedic injunction. It is not because Krishna is an intimate friend of Arjuna that he is flattering him 
by calling him the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Absolute Truth. Whatever Arjuna says in these two verses is confirmed by Vedic truth. Vedic injunctions affirm that only one who takes to devotional service to the Supreme Lord can understand him, whereas others cannot. Each and every word of this verse spoken by Arjuna is confirmed by Vedic injunction. In the Kena Upanishad, it is stated that the Supreme Brahman is the rest for everything, and Krishna has already explained that everything is resting on him. The Mundaka Upanishad confirms that the Supreme Lord, in whom everything is resting, can be realized only by those who engage constantly in thinking of him. This constant thinking of Krishna is smaranam, one of the methods of devotional service. It is only by devotional service to Krishna that one can understand his position and get rid of this material body. In the Vedas, the Supreme Lord is accepted as the purest of the pure. One who understands that Krishna is the purest of the pure can become purified from all sinful activities. One cannot be disinfected from sinful activities unless he surrenders unto the Supreme Lord. Arjuna's acceptance of Krishna as the Supreme Pure complies with the injunctions of Vedic literature. This is also confirmed by great personalities, of whom Narada is the chief. Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, and one should always meditate upon Him and enjoy one's transcendental relationship with Him. He is the Supreme Existence. He is free from bodily needs, birth, and death. Not only does Arjuna confirm this, but all the Vedic literatures, the Puranas, and histories. In all Vedic literatures, Krishna is thus described. And the Supreme Lord himself also says in the fourth chapter, Although I am unborn, I appear on this earth to establish religious principles. He is the supreme origin. He has no cause, for he is the cause of all causes, and everything is emanating from him. This perfect knowledge can be had by the grace of the Supreme Lord. Here, Arjuna expresses himself through the grace of Krishna. If we want to understand Bhagavad Gita, we should accept the statements in these two verses. This is called the Parampara system, acceptance of the disciplic succession. Unless one is in the disciplic succession, he cannot understand Bhagavad Gita. It is not possible by so-called academic education Unfortunately, those proud of their academic education, despite so much evidence in Vedic literatures, stick to their obstinate conviction that Krishna is an ordinary person. Text 14 Sarvam etad ritam manye yanmam vadasi keshava nahi te bhagavan vyaktim Vidur Deva Na Danava Sarvam All Etat These Ritam Truth Manye Accept Yat Which Mam Unto Me Vadasi You Tell Keshava O Krishna Na Never He Certainly Te Your Bhagavan O Personality of Godhead, Vyaktim, Revelation, Vitu, Can Know, Deva, the Demigods, Na, Nur, Danava, the Demons. Translation O Krishna, I totally accept this truth, all that you have told me. Neither the gods nor demons, O Lord, know thy personality. Purport. Arjuna herein confirms that persons of faithless and demonic nature cannot understand Krishna. 
He is not even known by the demigods. So what to speak of the so-called scholars of this modern world? By the grace of the Supreme Lord, Arjuna has understood that the Supreme Truth is Krishna, and that He is the Perfect One. One should therefore follow the path of Arjuna. He received the authority of Bhagavad Gita. As described in the fourth chapter, the Parampara system of disciplic succession for the understanding of Bhagavad Gita was lost, and therefore Krishna re-established that disciplic succession with Arjuna because he considered Arjuna his intimate friend and a great devotee. Therefore, as stated in our introduction to Gita Upanishad, Bhagavad Gita should be understood in the Parampara system. When the Parampara system was lost, Arjuna was again selected to rejuvenate it. The acceptance of Arjuna, of all that Krishna says, should be emulated. Then we can understand the essence of Bhagavad Gita, and then only can we understand that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. Text 15 Svayam evat manat manam veta tvam purushottama bhuta bhavana bhutesha deva deva jagatpate Svayam, personality, eva, certainly, atmana, by yourself, atmanam, yourself, veta, no, tvam, you, purushottama, O greatest of all persons, Bhuta Bhavana, O origin of everything, Bhutesha, O Lord of everything, Deva Deva, O Lord of all demigods, Jagatpate, O Lord of the entire universe. Translation Indeed, you alone know yourself by your own potencies, O origin of all, Lord of all beings, God of gods, O Supreme Person, Lord of the Universe. PURPORT The Supreme Lord Krishna can be known by persons who are in a relationship with Him through the discharge of devotional service, like Arjuna and his successors. Persons of demonic or atheistic mentality cannot know Krishna. Mental speculation that leads one away from the Supreme Lord is a serious sin, and one who does not know Krishna should not try to comment on Bhagavad Gita. Bhagavad Gita is the statement of Krishna, and since it is the science of Krishna, it should be understood from Krishna as Arjuna understood it. It should not be received from atheistic persons. The Supreme Truth is realized in three aspects, as impersonal Brahman, localized Paramatma, and at last, as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. So at the last stage of understanding the Absolute Truth, one comes to the Supreme Personality of Godhead. A liberated man, and even a common man, may realize impersonal Brahman or localized Paramatma, Yet, they may not understand God's personality from the verses of Bhagavad Gita, which are being spoke, spoken by this person, Krishna. Sometimes the impersonalists accept Krishna as Bhagavan, or they accept his authority. Yet, many liberated persons cannot understand Krishna as Purushottama, the Supreme Person, the Father of all living entities. Therefore, Arjuna addresses him as Purushottama. And if one comes to know him as the father of all the living entities, still one may not know him as the supreme controller. Therefore, he is addressed here as Bhutesha, the supreme controller of everyone. And even if one knows Krishna as the supreme controller of all living entities, still one may not know that he is the origin of all the demigods. Therefore, he is addressed herein as Deva Deva, the worshipful God of all demigods. 
And even if one knows him as the worshipful God of all demigods, one may not know that he is the supreme proprietor of everything. Therefore, he is addressed as Jakatpati. Thus, the truth about Krishna is established in this verse by the realization of Arjuna. And we should follow in the footsteps of Arjuna to understand Krishna as he is. Text 16 Vaktum arhasi asheshena divya hi atma vibhutaya yabir vibhuti bir lokan imams tam vyapya tishtasi Vaktum to say arhasi deserve asheshena in detail divya divine he certainly atma yourself Vibhutaya, opulences, yabhi, by which, vibhutabhi, opulences, lokan, all the planets, iman, these, tvam, you, vyapya, pervading, tishtasi, remain. Translation Please tell me in detail of your divine powers by which you pervade all these worlds and abide in them. PURPORT In this verse it appears that Arjuna is already satisfied with his understanding of the Supreme Lord Krishna. By Krishna's grace, Arjuna has personal experience, intelligence and knowledge, and whatever else a person may have through all these agencies, and he has understood Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. For him there is no doubt, yet he is asking Krishna to explain his all-pervading nature, so that in the future people will understand, especially the impersonalists, how he exists in his all-pervading aspect through his different energies. One should know that this is being asked by Arjuna on behalf of the common people. Text 17 Katam vidyam aham yogims tvam sada parichintayan keshu keshu cha bhaveshu chintyo si bhagavan maya Katam, how vidyam aham shall I know? Yogin, O supreme mystic, tvam, you, sada, always, parichintayan, thinking, keshu, in which, keshu, in which, cha, also, bhaveshu, nature, chintya asi, you are remembered, bhagavan, O supreme, maya, by me. Translation How should I meditate on you? In what various forms are you to be contemplated, O blessed Lord? Purport as it is stated in the previous chapter, the Supreme Personality of Godhead is covered by his Yoga Maya. Only surrendered souls and devotees can see him. Now Arjuna is convinced that his friend Krishna is the Supreme Godhead, but he wants to know the general process by which the all-pervading Lord can be understood by the common man. No common man, including the demons and atheists, can know Krishna, because he is guarded by his yoga maya energy. Again, these questions are asked by Arjuna for their benefit. The superior devotee is not only concerned for his own understanding, but for the understanding of all mankind. Out of his mercy, because he is a Vaishnav, a devotee, Arjuna is opening the understanding for the common man as far as the all-pervasiveness of the Supreme is concerned. He addresses Krishna specifically as Yogin, because Sri Krishna is the master of the Yogamaya energy, by which he is covered and uncovered to the common man. The common man who has no love for Krishna cannot always think of Krishna, therefore he has to think materially. Arjuna is considering the mode of thinking of the materialistic persons of this world. 
Because materialists cannot understand Krishna spiritually, they are advised to concentrate the mind on physical things and try to see how Krishna is manifested by physical representations. Text 18 Vistarenatmano yogam vibhutim cha janardana buya kataya triptir hi shrinvato nasti me mritam Vistarena in description atmana of yourself yogam mystic power vibhutim opulences cha also janardana O, o killer of the atheists. Buya, again. Kataya, describe. Tripti, satisfaction. He, certainly. Shrinvata, hearing. Na asti, there is no. Me, my. Amritam, nectar. Translation. Tell me again, in detail, O Janardan, Krishna, of your mighty potencies and glories for I never tire of hearing your ambrosial words. PURPORT A similar statement was made to Sutta Goswami by the rishis of Nayamsharanya, headed by Shonaka. That statement is, Vayam tu na vitri priyama uttama shloka vikrame yach trinvatam rasa gyanam svadu svadu pade pade one can never be satiated, even though one continuously hears the transcendental pastimes of Krishna, who is glorified by Vedic hymns. Those who have entered into a transcendental relationship with Krishna relish in every step descriptions of the pastimes of the Lord. Thus Arjuna is interested to hear about Krishna, specifically how he remains as the all-pervading Supreme Lord. Now, as far as Amritam, nectar, is concerned, any narration or statement concerning Krishna is just like nectar. And this nectar can be perceived by practical experience. Modern stories, fiction, and histories are different from the transcendental pastimes of the Lord, in that one will tire of hearing mundane stories. But one never tires of hearing about Krishna. It is for this reason only that the history of the whole universe is replete with references to the pastimes of the incarnations of Godhead. For instance, the Puranas are histories of bygone ages that relate the pastimes of the various incarnations of the Lord. In this way, the reading matter remains forever fresh, despite repeated readings. Text 19 Shri Bhagavan Uvacha Hanta Te Kata Yishami Divya Hyatma Vibhutaya Pradanyata Kuru Shreshta Nasti Yanto Vistarasyame Shri Bhagavan Uvacha, the Supreme Personality of Godhead said, Hanta, yes, Te, unto you. Kata Yishami, I shall speak. Divya, divine. He, certainly. Atma Vibhutaya, personal opulences. Pradhan Yata, principally. Kuru Shreshta, O best of the Kurus. Na Asti, there is no. Anta, limit. Vistarasya, to the extent. Me, my. Translation. The Blessed Lord said, Yes, I will tell you of my splendorous manifestations, but only of those which are prominent, O Arjuna, for, for my opulence is limitless. PURPORT It is not possible to comprehend the greatness of Krishna and his opulences. The senses of the individual soul are imperfect and do not permit him to understand the totality of Krishna's affairs. Still, the devotees try to understand Krishna, but not on the principle that they will be able to understand Krishna fully at any specific time or in any state of life. 
Rather, the very topics of Krishna are so relishable that they appear to them as nectar. Thus they enjoy them. In discussing Krishna's opulences and his diverse energies, the pure devotees take transcendental pleasure. Therefore they want to hear and discuss them. Krishna knows that living entities do not understand the extent of his opulences. He therefore agrees to state only the principal manifestations of his different energies. The word pradanyata, principle, is very important because we can understand only a few of the principal details of the Supreme Lord, for his features are unlimited. It is not possible to understand them all. And vibhuti, as used in this verse, refers to the opulences by which he controls the whole manifestation. In the Amara Kosha Dictionary, it is stated that vibhuti indicates an exceptional opulence. The impersonalist or the pantheist cannot understand the exceptional opulences of the Supreme Lord nor the manifestations of his divine energy. Both in the material world and, the, and in the spiritual world, his energies are distributed in every variety of manifestation. Now Krishna is describing what can be directly perceived by the common man. Thus part of his variegated energy is described in this way. Text 20 Aham Atma Gudakesha Sarva Bhutashaya Stita Aham Adish Cha Madhyam Cha Bhutanam Anta Eva Cha Aham I Atma Soul Gudakesh O Arjuna Sarva Bhuta All Living Entities Ashaya Stita Situated Within Aham I Am Adi, origin, cha, also, madhyam, middle, cha, also, bhutanam, all living entities, anta, end, eva, certainly, cha, and. Translation I am the self, O Gudakesh, seated in the hearts of all creatures. I am the beginning, the middle, and the end of all beings. PURPORT In this verse, Arjuna is addressed as Gudakesh, which means one who has conquered the darkness of sleep. For those who are sleeping in the darkness of ignorance, it is not possible to understand how the Supreme Godhead manifests himself in the material and spiritual worlds. Thus, this address by Krishna to Arjuna is significant. Because Arjuna is above such darkness, the personality of Godhead agrees to describe his various opulences. Krishna first informs Arjuna that he is the self or soul of the entire cosmic manifestation by dint of his primary expansion. Before the material creation, the Supreme Lord, by his plenary expansion, accepts the Purusha incarnations, and from him everything begins. Therefore he is Atma, the soul of the Mahat Tattva, the universal elements. The total material energy is not the cause of the creation, but actually the Mahavishnu enters into the Mahat Tattva, the total material energy. He is the soul. When Mahavishnu enters into the manifested universes. He again manifests himself as the super-soul in each and every entity. We have experienced that the personal body of the living entity exists due to the presence of the spiritual spark. Without the existence of the spiritual spark, the body cannot develop. Similarly, the material manifestation cannot develop unless the Supreme Soul of Krishna enters. The Supreme Personality of Godhead is existing as the Super Soul in all manifested universes. A description of the three Purusha avatars is given in Srimad Bhagavatam. 
the, the Supreme Personality of Godhead manifests three features as Karana Dakshai Vishnu, Garbha Dakshai Vishnu, and Shira Dakshai Vishnu in this material manifestation. The Supreme Lord, Krishna, the cause of all causes, lies down in the cosmic ocean as Mahavishnu, or Karana Dakshai Vishnu. And therefore, Krishna is the beginning of this universe, the maintainer of the universal manifestation, and at the end, of all the energy. Text 21 Adityanam aham vishnur jyotisham ravir amshuman marichir marutam asmi nakshatranam aham shashi Adityanam of the Adityas aham I Vishnu, the Supreme Lord, Jyotisham, of all luminaries, Ravi, the sun, Amshuman, radiant, Marichi, Marichi, Marutam, of the Marutas, Asmi, I am, Nakshatranam, of stars, Aham, I am, Shashi, the moon. Translation of the Adityas, I am Vishnu. Of lights, I am the radiant sun. I am Marichi, of the Maruts. And among the stars, I am the moon. PURPORT There are twelve Adityas, of which Krishna is the principal. And among all the luminaries twinkling in the sky, the sun is the chief. And in the Brahma Samhita, the sun is accepted as the glowing effulgence of the Supreme Lord, and is considered to be one of his eyes. Marichi is the controlling deity of the heavenly spaces. Among the stars, the moon is most prominent at night. Thus the moon represents Krishna. Text 22 Vedanam sama vedosmi Devanam asmi vasava, Indrianam manash chasmi, Bhutanam asmi chetana. Vedanam, of all the Vedas, Samaveda, the Samaveda, Asmi, I am, Devanam, of all the demigods, Asmi, I am, Vasava, heavenly king, Indrianam, of all the senses, Mana, the mind, Cha, also, Asmi, I am, Bhutanam, of all living entities, Asmi, I am, Chaitana, the living force. Translation Of the Vedas, I am the Samaveda. Of the demigods, I am Indra. Of the senses, I am the mind. And in living beings, I am the living force, knowledge. PURPORT The difference between matter and spirit is that matter has no consciousness, like the living entity. Therefore this consciousness is supreme and eternal. Consciousness cannot be produced by a combination of matter. TEXT 23 RUDRANAM SHANKARASH Jasmi Vite Show Yaksha Rakshasam Vasunam Pavakash Jasmi Meru Shikarinam Aham Rudranam of all the Rudras Shankara Lord Shiva Cha also Asmi I am Vitesha the Lord of the Treasury Yaksha Rakshasam of the Yakshas and the Rakshasas, Vasunam, of the Vasus, Pavaka, fire, Cha, also, Asmi, I am, Meru, Meru, Shikarinam, of all mountains, Aham, I am. Translation Of all the Rudras, I am Lord Shiva. Of the Yakshas and Rakshasas, I am the Lord of Wealth, Kuvera. 
Of the Vasus I am fire, Agni, and of the mountains I am Meru. PURPORT There are eleven Rudras, of whom Shankara, Lord Shiva, is predominant. He is the incarnation of the Supreme Lord in charge of the modes of ignorance in the universe. Among the demigods, Kuvera is the chief treasurer, and he is a representation of the Supreme Lord. Meru is a mountain famed for its rich natural resources. Text 24 Puro dasam cha mukyam mam vidhi parta prihaspatim se naninam aham skanda sarasam asmi sagara Purodasam of all priests cha also mukyam chief mam me vidhi understand parta o son of prita Prihaspatim, Prihaspati, Senaninam, of all commanders, Aham, I am, Skanda, Kartikeya, Sarasam, of all reservoirs of water, Asmi, I am, Sagara, the ocean. Translation Of priests, O Arjuna, know me to be the chief, Prihaspati, the lord of devotion. Of generals, I am Skanda, the lord of war, and of bodies of water, I am the ocean. PURPORT Indra is the chief demigod of the heavenly planets and is known as the king of the heavens. The planet in which he reigns is called Indraloka. Prihaspati is Indra's priest, and since Indra is the chief of all kings, Prihaspati is the chief of all priests. And as Indra is the chief of all kings, similarly Skanda, the son of Parvati and Lord Shiva, is the chief of all military commanders. And of all bodies of water, the ocean is the greatest. These representations of Krishna only give hints of his greatness. Text 25 Maharshinam Brigur Aham Giram Asmi Ekam Aksharam Yagyanam Japa Yagyosmi Stavaranam Himalaya Maharshinam among the great sages Brigu Brigu Aham I am Giram of vibrations Asmi I am Ekam Aksharam, Pranava, Yagyanam, of sacrifices, Japa Yagya, chanting, Asmi, I am, Stavaranam, of immovable things, Himalaya, the Himalayan mountains. Translation Of the great sages, I am Brigu. Of vibrations, I am the transcendental Om. Of sacrifices, I am the chanting of the holy names, Japa. And of immovable things, I am the Himalayas. PURPORT Brahma, the first living creature within the universe, created several suns for the propagation of various kinds of species. The most powerful of his sons is Brigu, who is also the greatest sage. Of all the transcendental vibrations, the Om, Omkara, represents the Supreme. Of all the sacrifices, the chanting of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare, is the purest representation of Krishna. Sometimes animal sacrifices are recommended, but in the sacrifice of Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, there is no question of violence. It is the simplest and the purest. Whatever is sublime in the worlds is a representation of Krishna. Therefore the Himalayas, the greatest mountains in the world, also represent him. The mountain named Meru was mentioned in a previous verse. But Meru is sometimes immovable, whereas the Himalayas are never movable. 
Thus the Himalayas are greater than Meru. Text 26 Ashvata sarva vrikshanam devarshinam cha narada gandharvanam chitrarata siddhanam kapilo muni Ashvata, the banyan tree, sarva vrikshanam of all trees, devarshinam of all the sages amongst the demigods, cha and Narada, Narada. Gandharvanam, the citizens of the Gandharva planet. Tritrarata, Tritrarata. Sint, Siddhanam, of all those who are perfected. Kapila Muni, Kapila Muni. Translation. Of all trees, I am the holy fig tree. And amongst the sages and demigods, I am Narada. Of the singers of the gods, Gandharvas, I am Tritrarata, and among perfected beings, I am the sage Kapila. PURPORT The fig tree, Ashvata, is one of the most beautiful and highest trees, and people in India often worship it as one of their daily morning rituals. Amongst the demigods, they also worship Narada, who is considered the greatest devotee in the universe. Thus he is the representation of Krishna as a devotee. The Gandharva planet is filled with entities who sing beautifully, and among them the best singer is Tritrarata. Amongst the perpetually living entities, Kapila is considered an incarnation of Krishna, and his philosophy is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Later on, another Kapila became famous, but his philosophy was atheistic. Thus, there is a gulf of difference between them. Text 27 Uchai shravasam ashvanam vidhi mam amri tod bhavam airavatam gajendranam naranam cha naradipam Uchai Shravasam, Uchai Shrava, Ashvanam among horses, Vidhi, no, Mam, me, Amrita Udbhavam, produced from the churning of the ocean, Airavatam, Airavata, Gajendranam of elephants, Naranam among human beings, Cha and Naradipam, the king, Translation Of horses, know me to be Uchai Shrava, who rose out of the ocean, born of the elixir of immortality. Of lordly elephants, I am Iravata, and among men, I am the monarch. Purport The devotee demigods and the demons, Asuras, once took a sea journey. On this journey, nectar and poison were produced, and Lord Shiva drank the poison. From the nectar were produced many entities, of which there was a horse named Utraishrava. Another animal produced from the nectar was an elephant named Airavata. Because these two animals were produced from nectar, they have special significance, and they are representatives of Krishna. Amongst the human beings, the king is the representative of Krishna, because Krishna is the maintainer of the universe and the kings, who are appointed on account of their godly qualifications, or maintainers of their kingdoms. Kings like Maharaj Yudhishthir, Maharaj Parikshit, and Lord Ram were all highly righteous kings who always thought of the citizens' welfare. In Vedic literature, the king is considered to be the representative of God. In this age, however, with the corruption of the principles of religion, monarchy d decayed and is now finally abolished. It is to be understood that in the past, however, people were more happy under righteous kings. 
text 28. Ayudanam aham vadram denunam asmi kamaduk prajanash chasmi kandarpa sarpanam asmi vasuki Ayudanam of all weapons. Aham, I am. Vadram, the thunderbolt. Denunam, of cows. Asmi, I am. Kamaduk, the Sarabi cows. Prajana, for begetting children. Cha, and. Asmi, I am. Kandarpa, Cupid. Sarpanam, of all snakes. Asmi, I am. Vasuki, Asuki. Translation Of weapons, I am the thunderbolt. Among cows, I am the sarabi, givers of abundant milk. Of procreators, I am Kandarpa, the god of love. And of serpents, I am Vasuki, the chief. Purport the thunderbolt, indeed a mighty weapon, represents Krishna's power. In Krishna Loka, in the spiritual sky, there are cows which can be milked at any time, and they can give as much milk as one likes. Of course, such cows do not exist in this material world, but there is mention of them in Krishna Loka. The Lord keeps many such cows, which are called Surabi. It is stated that the Lord is engaged in herding the Sarabi cows. Kandarpa is the sex desire for presenting good sons, and therefore Kandarpa is the representative of Krishna. Sometimes sex is engaged in only for sense gratification. Such sex does not represent Krishna. But sex for the generation of good children is called Kandarpa and represents Krishna. Text 29. Anantash chasmi naganam varuno yadasam aham pitranam aryama chasmi yama sam yamatam aham ananta ananta cha also asmi i am naganam of all serpents varuna the demigod controlling the water Yadasam, of all aquatics. Aham, I am. Petronam, of the ancestors. Aryama, Aryama. Cha, also. Asmi, I am. Yama, the controller of death. Samyamatam, of all regulators. Aham, I am. Translation. Of the celestial Naga, snakes, I am Ananta. Of the aquatic deities, I am Varuna. Of departed ancestors, I am Aryama. And among the dispensers of law, I am Yama, Lord of Death. Purport Among the many celestial Naga serpents, Ananta is the greatest, as is Varuna among the aquatics. They both represent Krishna. There is also a planet of trees, presided over by Aryama, who represents Krishna. There are many living entities who give punishment to the miscreants, and among them Yama is the chief. Yama is situated in a planet near this earthly planet, and after death those who are very sinful are taken there, and Yama arranges different kinds of punishments for them. Text 30. Praladash chasmi daichanam kala kalayatam aham mriganam cha mrigendroham vainateyash cha pakshinam Pralada, pralad, cha, also, asmi, I am, daichanam, of the demons, kala, time, kalayatam, of subduers, aham, I am, mriganam, of animals, cha, and, mrigendra, the lion, aham, 
I am. Vainatea, Garuda. Cha, also. Pakshinam, of birds. Translation Among the Daitya demons, I am the devoted Prahlad. Among subduers, I am time. Among the beasts, I am the lion. And among birds, I am Garuda, the feathered carrier of Vishnu. Purport Aditi and Aditi are two sisters. The sons of Aditi are called Adityas, and the sons of Diti are called Daityas. All the Adityas are devotees of the Lord, and all the Daityas are atheistic. Although Prahlad was born in the family of the Daityas, he was a great devotee from his childhood. Because of his devotional service and godly nature, he is considered to be a representative of Krishna. There are many subduing principles, but time wears down all things in the material universe and so represents Krishna. Of the many animals, the lion is the most powerful and ferocious, and of the million varieties of birds, Garuda, the bearer of Lord Vishnu, is the greatest. Text 31 Pavana Pavatam Asmi Rama Shastra Pritam Aham Jashanam Makarash Chasmi Srodasam Asmi Janavi Pavana, the wind Pavatam, of all that purifies Asmi, I am Rama, Ram Shastra Britam, of the carriers of weapons Aham, I am Jashanam, of all aquatics Makara, shark Cha Asmi, I am also. Srodasam, of flowing rivers. Asmi, I am. Janavi, the river Ganges. Translation Of purifiers, I am the wind. Of the wielders of weapons, I am Ram. Of fishes, I am the shark. Of flowing rivers, I am the Ganges. Purport. Of all the aquatics, the shark is one of the biggest and is certainly the most dangerous to man. Thus, the shark represents Krishna. And of rivers, the greatest in India is the mother Ganges. Lord Ramachandra of the Ramayan, an incarnation of Krishna, is the mightiest of warriors. <clears throat> Text 32 Sarganam adir antascha <coughs> madhyam chaivaham arjuna adyatma vidya vidyanam vada pravadatam aham Sarganam of all creations adhi beginning anta end cha and madhyam middle cha also Eva, certainly, Aham, I am, Arjuna, or Arjuna, Adyatma Vidya, spiritual knowledge, Vijanam, of all education, Vada, natural conclusion, Pravadatam, of arguments, Aham, I am. <coughs> Translation Of all creations, I am the beginning and the end, and also the middle, O Arjuna. Of all sciences, I am the spiritual science of the self, and among logicians, I am the conclusive truth. PURPORT Among created manifestations, the total material elements are first created by Mahavishnu, and are annihilated by Lord Shiva. Brahma is the secondary creator. All these created elements are different incarnations of the material qualities of the Supreme Lord. Therefore he is the beginning, the middle, and the end of all creation. Regarding the spiritual science of the self, there are many literatures 
such as the Four Vedas, the Vedanta Sutra, and the Puranas, the Srimad Bhagavatam, and the Gita. These are all representatives of Krishna. Among logicians, there are different stages of argument. The presentation of evidence is called japa. The attempt to defeat one another is called vitanda, and the final conclusion is called vada. The conclusive truth, the end of all reasoning processes, is Krishna. Text 33 Aksharanam akarosmi dvanva samasi kasya cha aham evakshaya kalo dataham vishvato muka Aksharanam of letters Akara the first Asmi I am dvanva dual samasi kasya compounds Cha, and, aham, I am, eva, certainly, akshaya, eternal, kala, time, data, creator, aham, I am, bishvato, mukha, brahma. Of letters, I am the letter A, and among compounds, I am the dual word. I am also inexhaustible time, and of creators I am Brahma, whose manifold faces turn everywhere. PURPORT Akara, the first letter of the Sanskrit alphabet, is the beginning of the, of the Vedic literature. Without Akara, nothing can be sounded. Therefore, it is the beginning of sound. In Sanskrit, there are also many compound words, of which the dual word, like Ramakrishna, is called Dvanva. For instance, Ram and Krishna have the same rhythm, and therefore are called dual. Among all kinds of killers, time is the ultimate, because time kills everything. Time is the representative of Krishna, because in due course of time, there will be a great fire, and everything will be annihilated. Among the creators and living entities, Brahma is the chief. The various Brahmas exhibit four, eight, sixteen, etc. heads accordingly, and they are the chief creators in their respective universes. The Brahmas are representatives of Krishna. Text 34 Mrityu sarva harash chaham udbhavash cha bhavishyatam kirti shrir vak cha narinam smritir meda driti kshama Mrityu, death, sarva hara, all devouring, cha, also, aham, I am, udbhava, generation, cha, also, Bhavishyatam, of the future, Kirti, fame, Sri Vak, beautiful speech, Cha, also, Narinam, of women, Smriti, memory, Medha, intelligence, Driti, faithfulness, Shama, patience. Translation I am all devouring death and I am the generator of all things yet to be. Among women, I am fame, fortune, speech, memory, intelligence, faithfulness, and patience. PURPORT As soon as a man is born, he dies at every moment. Thus death is devouring every living entity at every moment. But the last stroke is called death itself. That death is Krishna. All species of life undergo six basic changes. They are born, they grow, they remain for some time, they reproduce, they dwindle, and finally vanish. Of these changes, the first is deliverance from the womb, and that is Krishna. The first generation is the beginning of all future activities. 
The six opulences listed are considered to be feminine. If a woman possesses all of them, or some of them, she becomes glorious. Sanskrit is a perfect language and is therefore very glorious. After studying, if one can remember the subject matter, he is gifted with good memory, or smriti. One need not read many books on different subject matters. The ability to remember a few and quote them when necessary is also another opulence. Text, Text 35 Brihat Sama Tata Sam Nam Gayatri Chandasam Aham Masanam Marga Shirshoham Ritunam Krishu Makara Brihat Sama The Brihat Sama Tata also Samnam of the Samaveda song, Gayatri, the Gayatri hymns, Chandasam, of all poetry, Aham, I am, Masanam, of months, Marga, Shirsho, Ham, the month of November, December, Aham, I am, Ritunam, of all seasons, Kashu, Makara, spring. Of. Translation. Of hymns, I am the Brihat Sama, sung to the Lord Indra. And of poetry, I am the Gayatri verse, sung daily by Brahmins. Of months, I am November and December. And of seasons, I am flower-bearing spring. Purport. It has already been explained by the Lord that amongst all the Vedas, the Samaveda is rich with beautiful songs played by the various demigods. One of these songs is the Brihat Sama, which has an exquisite melody and is sung at midnight. In Sanskrit, there are definite rules that regulate poetry, rhyme, and meter, and are not written whimsically, as in much modern poetry. Amongst the regulated poetry, the Gayatri Mantra, which is chanted by the duly qualified Brahmins, is the most prominent. The Gayatri Mantra is mentioned in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Because the Gayatri Mantra is especially meant for God-realization, it represents the Supreme Lord. This mantra is meant for spiritually advanced people, and when one attains success in chanting it, he can enter into the transcendental position of the Lord. One must first acquire the qualities of the perfectly situated person, the qualities of goodness according to the laws of material nature, in order to chant the Gayatri Mantra. The Gayatri Mantra is very important in Vedic civilization and, and is considered to be the sound incarnation of Brahman. Brahma is its initiator, and it is passed down from him in disciplic succession. <clears throat> the months of November and December are considered the best of all months, because in India grains are collected from the fields at this time, and the people become very happy. Of course, spring is a season universally liked, because it is neither too hot nor too cold, and the flowers and trees blossom and flourish. In spring, there are also many ceremonies commemorating Krishna's pastimes. Therefore, this is considered to be the most joyful of all seasons, and it is the representative of the Supreme Lord Krishna. Text 36 Dyutam chalayatam asmi tejas tejas vinam aham Jayosmi Vyavaseosmi Satvam Satvavatam Aham Dutam and gambling Chalayatam of all cheats Asmi I am Teja splendid Tejasvinam of everything splendid Aham I am Jaya victory Asmi 
I am. Via va sea, adventure. Asmi, I am. Sattvam, strength. Sattvavatam, of all the strong. Aham, I am. Translation. I am also the gambling of cheats, and of the splendid, I am the splendor. I am victory, I am adventure, and I am the strength of the strong. Purport. There are many kinds of cheaters all over the universe. Of all cheating processes, gambling stands supreme, and therefore represents Krishna. As the supreme, Krishna can be more deceitful than any mere man. If Krishna chooses to deceive a person, no one can surpass him in his deceit. His greatness is not simply one-sided, it is all-sided. Among the victorious, he is victory. He is the splendor of the splendid. Among enterprising industrialists, he is the most enterprising. Among adventurers, he is the most adventurous. And among the strong, he is the strongest. When Krishna was present on earth, no one could surpass him in strength. Even in his childhood, he lifted Govardhan Hill. No one can surpass him in cheating. No one can surpass him in splendor. No one can surpass him in victory. No one can surpass him in enterprise. And no one can surpass him in strength. Text 37 Vrishinam Vasudevosmi Pandavanam Dananjaya Muninam Api Aham Vyasa Kavinam Ushana Kavi Vrishinam of the descendants of Vrishni Vasudeva Krishna in Dwarka Asmi I am Pandavanam of the Pandavas Dananjaya Arjuna Muninam of the sages, Api also, Aham, I am, Vyasa, Vyas, the compiler of all Vedic literature, Kavinam of all great thinkers, Ushana, Ushana, Kavi, the thinker. Translation Of the descendants of Vrishni, I am Vasudeva, and of the Pandavas, I am Arjuna. Of the sages, I am Vyas, and among great thinkers, I am Ushana. PURPORT Krishna is the original Supreme Personality of Godhead, and Vasudeva is the immediate expansion of Krishna. Both Krishna and Baladeva appear as the sons of Vasudeva. Amongst the sons of Pandu, Arjuna is famous, Lint. Indeed, he is the best of men, and therefore represents Krishna. Among the Munis, or learned men, conversant in Vedic knowledge, Vyasa is the greatest, because he explained Vedic knowledge in many different ways, for the understanding of the common mass of people in this age of Kali. And Vyasa is also known as an incarnation of Krishna. Therefore, Vyasa also represents Krishna. Kavis are those who are capable of thinking thoroughly on any subject matter. Among the Kavis, Ushana was the spiritual master of the demons, and he was extremely intelligent, far-seeing, political, and spiritual in every way. Thus, Ushana is another representative of the opulence of Krishna. Text 38 Dando Damayatam Asmi Nitir asmi jikishatam monam chaivasmi guyanam gyanam gyanavatam aham Danda, punishment, damayatam, of all separation, asmi, I am, niti, morality, asmi, I am, jikishitam, of the victorious, monam, silence, cha, and, Eva, also, Asmi, I am, Guyanam, of secrets, Gyanam, knowledge, Gyanavatam, of the wise, Aham, 
I am. Translation Among punishments I am the rod of chastisement, and of those who seek victory I am morality. Of secret things I am silence, and of the wise I am wisdom. Purport There are many suppressing agents, of which the most important are those that cut down the miscreants. When miscreants are punished, the rod of chastisement represents Krishna. Among those who are trying to be victorious in some field of activity, the most, victoria, the most victorious element is morality. Among the confidential activities of hearing, thinking, and meditating, the silence is most important because by silence one can make progress very quickly. The wise man is he who can discriminate between matter and spirit, between God's superior and inferior natures. Such knowledge is Krishna himself. Text 39 Yach chapi sarva bhutanam bijam tad aham arjuna na tad asti vina yatsyan maya bhutam characharam yat, whatever, cha, also, api, may be, sarva bhutanam, of all creations, bijam, the seed, tat, that, aham, I am, Arjuna, O Arjuna, Na, not, Tat, that, Asti, there is, Vina, without, Yat, that, Syat, exists, Maya, by me, Bhutam, created, Characharam, moving and unmoving. Translation Furthermore, O Arjuna, I am the generating seed of all existences. There is no being, moving or unmoving, that can exist without me. PURPORT Everything has a cause, and that cause or seed of manifestation is Krishna. Without Krishna's energy, nothing can exist. Therefore he is called omnipotent. Without his potency, neither the movable nor the unmovable can exist. Whatever existence is not founded on the energy of Krishna is called Maya, that which is not. Text 40 Nanto sti mama divyanam vibhutinam parantapa esha tu deshata prokto vibhuter vistaro maya na nor anta a limit. Asti is there. Mama of my. Divyanam, divine. Vibhutinam, opulences. Parantapa, O conqueror of the enemies. Esha, all this. Tu, that. Udeshata, examples. Prokta, spoken. Vibhute, opulences. Vistara, expanded. Maya, by me. Translation O mighty conqueror of enemies, there is no end to my divine manifestations. What I have spoken to you is but a mere indication of my infinite opulences. PURPORT As stated in the Vedic literature, although the opulences and energies of the Supreme are understood in various ways, there is no limit to such opulences. Therefore, not all the opulences and energies can be explained. Simply, a few examples are being described to Arjuna to pacify his inquisitiveness. Text 41 Yad yad viputimat satvam Srimad urjitam evava Tat tad evava Mama Tejo Misha Sambhavam Yat Yat, whatever, Vibhuti, opulences, Mat, having, Sattvam, existence, Srimat, beautiful, Urjitam, glorious, Eva, certainly, Va, or, Tat Tat, all those, Eva, certainly, 
Avagacha, you must know. Tvam, you. Mama, my. Teja, splendor. Amsha, partly. Sambhavam, born of. Translation Know that all beautiful, glorious, and mighty creations spring from but a spark of my splendor. Purport Any glorious or beautiful existence should be understood to be but a fragmental manifestation of Krishna's opulence, whether it be in the spiritual or material world. Anything extraordinarily opulent should be considered to represent Krishna's opulence. Text 42. Atava bahu naitena kim gyatena tavarjuna vishtabhyayam idam kritsnam e kamshena stito jagat atava or bahuna many etena by this kind kim what gyatena knowing tava you Arjuna, O Arjuna, Vistapya, entire, Aham, I, Idam, this, Kritsnam, all manifestations, Eka, one, Amshena, part, Stita, situated, Jagat, in the universe. Translation But what need is there, Arjuna, for all this detailed knowledge? With a single fragment of myself, I pervade and support this entire universe. PURPORT The Supreme Lord is represented throughout the entire material universes by His entering into all things as the Supersoul. The Lord here tells Arjuna that there is no point in understanding how things exist in their sep separate opulence and grandeur. He should know that all things are existing due to Krishna's entering them as Supersoul. From Brahma, the most gigantic entity, on down to the smallest ant, all are existing because the Lord has entered each and all and is sustaining them. Worship of demigods is discouraged herein because even the greatest demigods like Brahma and Shiva only represent part of the opulence of the Supreme Lord. He is the origin of everyone born, and no one is greater than him. He is Samata, which means that no one is superior to him, and that no one is equal to him. In the Vishnu Mantra it is said that one who considers the Supreme Lord Krishna in the same category with demigods, be they even Brahma or Shiva, becomes at once an atheist. If, however, one thoroughly studies the different descriptions of the opulences and expansions of Krishna's energy, then one can understand without any doubt the position of Lord Sri Krishna and can fix his mind in the worship of Krishna without deviation. The Lord is all-pervading by the expansion of his partial representation, the Supersoul, who enters into everything that is. Pure devotees therefore concentrate their minds in Krishna consciousness in full devotional service. Therefore, they are always situated in the transcendental position. Devotional service and worship of Krishna are very clearly indicated in this chapter, in verses 8 to 11. That is the way of pure devotional service. How one can attain the highest devotional perfection of association with the Supreme Personality of Godhead has been thoroughly explained in this chapter. Thus end the Bhaktivedanta purports to the tenth chapter of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita in the matter of the opulence of the Absolute.